the use of what we know now as AI in neurology? I say you have to kind of explain what you're doing with it. So in terms of move, let's just go with movement design. I think it could allow, first of all, remember that right now all AI is generative AI. Yes, there's no without such, a doubt. There's Text no segregation. Such, yeah, there's no machine with an original idea, not yet. So I would say as long as you're not copying someone's work to an extent that copyrights are violated, it might be great if you're a watchmaker and instead of spending three years designing an original drivetrain so you don't have to use the pivot points of an Omega movement from 1950, it could speed you along the way to finishing up the engineering uh, without an engineer. So people don't realize that not all watchmakers are engineers. If you go to Debatoon, Denis Flagellet has a full-time engineer. Not that he couldn't do this stuff himself, but if you're going to run a watch company at scale, you need to have someone whose only job is computer-assisted modeling design and number crunching. And then Recep Recepi discussed his manufacturer. He has an engineer on staff. And if you look at Romain Gautier, he's an engineer, but he's not a watchmaker. So... In order for a small operation, let's say someone who operates out of like his house, like Ludovic Balloir or Raoul Pages, and now this person wants to create an all new movement, but he doesn't have $250,000 seed money and three years to work by trial and error. I think that AI could circumvent the need to have your own in-house engineer to get the basic function of the movement right, leaving the watchmaker to function on thing or to focus on things like architecture, specific ideas that he wants to incorporate, like a pivoted detent escapement, or focus on things like Recep Recep, he focuses on bridge design, size, relative proportion, decoration styles.